Hey guys, welcome back to Popo's Woodworks. Today's project is going to be another, it's a repeat build, it's going to be another stovetop cover. The reason I'm doing this again is because I've been getting a lot of questions about, like my stove and the one that I've got on my channel now is for a flat top stove. So I've been getting a lot of questions on how do you build one if you have the, the raised burners on a stove. So I'm actually going to build one now for one of my buddies that I work with and I figured I'd just take time to do this video and that way help, hopefully it'll help answer your questions or what have you so basically he measured it for me because i don't have a stove with the with the burners that's above the stove and he measured it and said they're one inch high so that's the other than the way i built it the first time we just got to count for that so i'll go ahead and take you along on this build stick with me we'll get started it's, it's pretty simple and to start off the material list is i bought a so if you're on my saw now i bought if you hear that noise my daughter's singing on a karaoke machine on the porch so I bought a one by six by 10 foot because these things are 29. I'm gonna be cutting them down to 29 and a half inches long and I'm gonna need four strips. That's gonna be, in other words, I'll show you here. That's gonna be the four, these four strips here, the wide ones, all right? And then the two top pieces here, these are one by fours and I only bought, cause Lowe's sells them in a four foot section, so I'm only going to need 22 inches on that, so therefore I bought the four foot section, which is 48 inches. And then I bought the two handles, and that's it. Now we're going to have to, I got some scrap over here in the corner. We're going to have to make a strip to account for the burners, so we're going to get to that. But let's get to cutting. I also get asked a lot, what type of sandpaper do I use for the finishing touches? Now, this is that higher grade wood at Lowe's. So it's pretty smooth as it is. But what I do is I use this. I've got a five inch disc sand, orbital, orbital, is that right? Disc sander, anyway, and I use 220 grit. Now, if it's really rough, I'll start low 60, 80 and work my way up. But this is all I ever use for the final sanding. All right, so basically now what I do is I just lay it out the way I'm gonna want it. So as you can see, like you got a big knot on this side, so just turn the boards however you want it. These boards have a little bit of a cup to them. And when I was at typical Lowe's, when I was at Lowe's, I literally picked through the entire stack to find one that was straight enough to do this with. That's always the problem because the only lumber places we have to choose around here is Home Depot and Lowe's. But either way, Pick out the pattern and how you want the knots because this is knotty pine. It's going to have knots in it. And then once you get it the way you want it, then all we're going to do is come over here and we're going to take these pieces and you're going to lay them down both sides like this right here on both ends. And then what I do is I put a good bead of glue down and then just tack it with brads because when you stain it, the brads kind of disappear. Plus, if you do see a little bit of the nail, it, it gives it that rustic look that we're going after anyway. So let me go ahead and I'm gonna do a little bit more sanding on these, like right here and stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that sanded down to where I like it and then we'll get to gluing it and putting it together. Once I get these like I want them, I'm gonna come here, figure out which side I like the best. I'm gonna do this side. And then take my tight bond three and just glue it up. This is really gonna what is gonna be what holds it all together. The brads are just there to hold it until the glue dries. So I set that down and I like to wiggle it around a little bit, let that glue settle. And as you can see, I'm using my, my flag template because I know it's square. You don't have to have this, you can use a square or either eyeball it. I mean, it ain't gotta be perfect. I'm gonna put one here. Well, make sure it don't move on me. 
Put one there. And one right there. And now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and shoot the rest of them. Now to get the handle center, these are the handles that I chose. I'll show you here. Here the little like gate handles or whatever. So anyhow, anyhow, I can't talk, I'm getting tired already. So you come down, these are 22 inches long, so half of 22 is 11. So I found half and centered it up with the handle here, which is 11. And then Measure it to the tip of that so it's eight and a half inches down to the front tip. Eight to that, eight and a half inches down is where the bottom tip should be. So if you measure it this way. And then of course, this is three and a half inches wide. So half of that would be an inch and three quarters. And I came over and lined up both, both little tips with the inch and three quarters. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take the screws that came with it and go ahead and screw them in and then take it all back out and then I'll go ahead and stain it, but the holes will be there to let me know where the screws are. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that done and out of the way. What I did for the, for the bottom of this now, is what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna flip this over. This is gonna be the bottom that sits on the stove, okay? All right, so I cut two strips just out of a two by four. And what I did, as you can see, I made them one inch thick. Now, what I'm gonna do is put these on each side, like so, and glue those down and shoot them. And this is what's gonna sit, actually I'm gonna have to set them, inset them a little bit. And this is what's gonna sit on the inside of the stove to give you the clearance right here to clear the burners. So let me go ahead and figure out how much of an inset I need to do on it away from the edge and I'll get them nailed down. I measured my stove and what you're measuring is that that lip that divides the stove bed with the outside and it's three quarters of an inch so what i'm gonna do is play it safe i'm gonna go i'm gonna inset an inch in so what i did is i used the thickness of this that i already cut lined it up and drew a line and you can see my line maybe you can see it anyway so i'm gonna line this up on that just like that except it's gonna be laying flat anyway like that and that way to give me an inch inset that way this will sit on the stove top and this is going to hang over the edge to where it covers the whole the whole edge of the stove so now i'm going to go ahead and run me a bead of glue down this and i'm going to use <clears throat> i'm going to use an inch if you can see that an inch and a half brads on this one just just enough to tack it down to where to let the glue dry so let me go ahead and get these things glued and shot on there something i just thought about while i was looking at this now my stove some stoves, well, all of them's got the lip on the front, but mine, eh, mine, it may work, it may not. So I'm not gonna go the full, the full length of this because it's the length of the stove. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna probably take two inches off and that way it'll stop about here and where my finger is. That way it'll be in there. It's still gonna sit on the stove top, but it ain't gonna have anything obstructing. In other words, you don't wanna do this the full length and then have that sitting on the front lip of the stove and then the whole thing be sitting up crooked. So I'm gonna go ahead and make these shorter. These, these really ain't gonna be seen anyway. They're strictly to just give you that clearance to where these things right here, when you put this on there, it won't touch the burner. So I'm gonna go ahead and shorten these things down about two inches and, and knock two inches off and be done with it. All right, so let's pretend this is the lip. Let's see how tall this is. That's right at just a hair under an inch. So if this is the lip, let me make sure my camera's gonna get this. I'll do it like that. All right, so if this is the lip of the stove, when you put this on, that way it'll clear the lip of the stove on the front side and you'll have that and you're not going to be able to you're not going to see these little pieces right here because the outside edges of the stove and the front edge of the stove is going to completely conceal that and these pieces here will lock them in 
So now I'm going to go ahead and throw my latex gloves on and get to staining, which is absolutely my favorite part. I hate sanding, I hate all the other stuff, but I love to stain. Now the stain is all dry, this thing is ready to go. There's only one thing left to do, and that's to, that's to put my mark on it. Hopefully this thing's hot enough. And there she goes. And that's it. So, take you off the stand. I got my little burn logo on there and that's what it looks like finished. Like I said, you can see the sides. But of course, we're going to put a we're going to put like their either their the initial last name kind of like I did mine when they were established. We're going to put that in the center and paint it. And then I'll probably spray a coat of, a coat of polyurethane over top of it, either do some wipe on poly. I don't want to go too terribly heavy on it. But anyway, that's it in a nutshell. If you got any questions, shoot me a comment. I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability. And like I always say, thank y'all for watching. Y'all have a nice day. And if you like the video, like it. If you didn't, so be it. And subscribe.